am actually really excited to talk to you. And I, you know, a lot of people think it has to do with Mean Girls, but honestly, it, for me, it has to do with Hallmark because these movies, like I was just telling the last people I interviewed, these movies. Who was it? Who were you interviewing? Nikki and Brennan. Classics, Hallmark staples, go on. Right? Yeah. Um, cause these movies mean so much to me. They mean so much to so many people like me. And for me, I really found countdown to Christmas at the beginning of the pandemic when I spent my first Christmas alone. And when like, so you guys became like my Christmas family right. and like have gotten me through the past few years of Christmases. So my question to you is what makes Hallmark movies so special and why do you continue to do them? Well, the reason we do them is for the exact reason that what you just said, you know, they mean so much to so many people. And I think Christmas is based in tradition. That's why we do the turkey and we do the stuffing and we do the tree. And just like all the famous Christmas traditions, Hallmark Channel is now a tradition to all the families across the country. You know, it's it's part of Christmas. You can't have Hallmark. You can't have Christmas without Hallmark. And it's become synonymous. And I... I think it's really special. I think the reason I do them is because when, because, well, for two reasons. One is that I love having, having fans and Hallmark fans come up to you at the airport or wherever and tell, tell me what you just said. Hey, we watch Christmas movies all the time and they mean so much to me. And then they'll tell me an explanation as to why my family was dealing with this. My mother had to deal with this and your movies are what helped us feel like we had Christmas and helped us, you know, really have a feeling of love and joy at the holidays. And I don't think there's many networks or things out there that can say they do that. And so I, so I think what we do is the most special thing on the planet. We make movies for people that need these movies. And it's such a joy to do that, right? But the second yeah. reason I love working with Hallmark Channel is because they're so supportive of their talent. There is not a network in the world that is more supportive and treats their talent like a family than Hallmark. It is unparalleled. It is nothing like I've ever seen in 26 years of acting in the industry. They treat you like you're actually one of their like I don't want to say sons but like they treat you like family like you're one of their kids like they take care of you they look out for you they make sure you have everything you need and then they help you do storytelling that they're so open to supporting their talent and their talent stories you know mm -hmm. they're very supportive when you come to them with an idea like I came to them with this idea of the holiday sitter and you know you, I come in and I I say hey I want to do something and they're like okay what crazy idea do you have now and I'm like hear me out and then I tell them <laughs> and then they're like yeah that's a great idea go do it and so it's just so fun to have like a home that you can work and like this home where you can like play and tell stories and expand different mediums in it, it it's just a really special place there's no place like it I've actually made me love it more like yeah. why you just sell me on something I already love like yeah. that's amazing um, I actually loved the premise of this movie um, because me and myself, like myself as an aunt, like I've always prioritized work first and like it's my nieces and nephews are now older and I'm like, I did not know that about you. I did not know that about you. Like, you know, so for me, I was like, when I was reading the synopsis, I was like, okay, somebody crawled inside my brain. Like, you know, I crawled in your brain. Yep. You did. It's okay though. I'm going to, I'll give that to you. I'm like an earwig. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. I'm actually deathly, deathly terrified of those, so we will not think of you that way. What's that on your ear? I see something. I think. <laughs> but my question for you is: is that like, because you have been around acting so long, and family is so important, and and these all of these things, like, how do you like balance it all, and how how do you make time to make sure that you are a part of everybody in your life? Like this character, before you become this character th that you've created that realizes they don't even know their family. Yeah. Um, well, I think what's important to remember in this situation is that family comes in many different forms, right? So mm -hmm. you have family, but I think we all have our chosen family that's even sometimes we're tighter with than our actual family, right? That, that, that happens. So for me... You know, my parents are both passed away 
um james's dad my husband's dad is no longer with us so we have his mom and my brothers and sisters but like everyone's kind of busy doing their thing so christmas has really evolved and changed over the past few years as to what what christmas looks like for us and Mm -hmm. i think that's what's so special about telling the story of the holiday sitter is that christmas doesn't have to be the normal a plus b equals c what you know that we've heard for so long christmas can mean so many things to so many people and that's what sam my character in the holiday sitter goes through you know like he's going to go to hawaii and not even go home for christmas because he hasn't been home in five years for christmas because he's the eternal bachelor he's living his life Eh, i don't want to go to the suburbs and live with like lawn gnomes and you know minivans like that's not my thing and then he ends up being pulled in to watch his niece and nephew for the holidays and by him stepping into seeing what a family could look like for him it sparks him to realize oh maybe this is something i want and he learns about it so for this christmas in the holiday sitter it's the niece and the nephew sam their uncle and jason the hot hunky contract neighbor that sam's falling in love with so it's literally you know just a mesh of all these different people as the family unit for this movie so i think that's what's really special is that it shows different families and different chosen families and what those can look like at the holidays yeah my actually one of my really good guy friends he always makes fun of me with over hallmark movies and he's like oh that's my mom's thing that's my mom's thing but when i was preparing for this and i read him the synopsis of this he actually was like, okay, this is a Christmas movie that I will sit and watch with you and my husband. And I was like, I'm excited. And he's like, thank you. We need the rating. (laughs) I'll I'll let him know. He was just like, um, oh, is he frozen? Those are I froze. Are you froze? I I don't know. One of us froze. It's okay though. It was the earwig. Um, but he was like, you know, it's something that I feel like I'll see myself for the first time in something that like you love to watch. And so, you know, Hallmark has become so more inclusive over the past, you know, few years. And how, how's it felt to be such a big driving part of that? I mean, especially with movies like this, like, and knowing that somebody's actually going to see themselves. There's been no greater honor in my entire career than telling LGBTQ plus stories that matter at Hallmark Channel. Hands down, the Christmas House 1, the Christmas House 2, and the Holiday Sitter are the three things I'm most proud of in my entire career that I've done, even more than Mean Girls. Because I feel like these movies are making a difference, and I'm helping the 16-year-old Jonathan that's sitting in Ohio, just like me when I was 16 years old, see himself in a holiday movie with his family during the holiday, sitting and watching that, he's feeling seen. And there's no bigger honor than that. And the great thing about The Holiday Sitter is that it's a movie that has two men that are going to make history because for the first time, we're going to see our two men meet at the holidays and have a meet cute and then fall in love. And we've never seen that. We saw Christmas House 1 and 2. We've seen we were already married. And we had our first yeah. you know, same-sex kiss, which was wonderful and beautiful. But for this, it's the first time we're going to have a meet cute. But the thing about The Holiday Sitter that makes it different than any other LGBTQ plus movie this year, I think, is, yes, it's a movie with two men it, that are the leads falling in love, but it's not a LGBTQ plus movie for L- just LGBTQ plus people. It's a movie for everyone. Just like Hallmark Channel is for everyone, just like Christmas is for everyone, The Holiday Sitter is for everyone. So I think that's what makes this movie really special because it's based in just love and Christmas and family. And I think so many people will be able to see themselves in this movie. And I know it was really important for me to make this movie as an executive producer and bring the story because basically I walked in and I said, the the the... The root of this movie, the the inspiration of it was me telling them, I want to do Uncle Buck, but he's gay. And they're like, that's funny. Brilliant. So the idea was gay Uncle Buck. Since then, it has changed into a completely different movie in many different forms. But that's Mm kind of like the root where we got that, where I got the like original idea. Um, And so what 
is so great about that is that there's so many things that in this movie that Sam, my character, deals with other than coming home and having a hilarious comedy about taking care of his niece and nephew, fish out of water. It's hilarious. But there's so many issues and things that I have dealt with as a man of a certain age um, who is gay, who has gone through things in life. Like when I, so I was able to incorporate those in the movie. So I hope people feel seen when they see these moments. Like one of my favorite ones is a conversation I have with my sister in the movie about how growing up, I didn't know if I could have a family or get married or have kids because it just wasn't an option when I was 18 years old back in 1990 something, you know, it it just wasn't an option. It was a different time. And so the world has changed, but the inner voice, a lot of gay men, well, I'm speaking for myself, but I know a lot of friends that feel this too. The inner voice has to kind of catch up with what's going on in the world, right? Yeah. It's different to an extent now, but like there's still part of you that doesn't feel for me, that doesn't feel like it's a real thing. And then I went and got married and Congratulations. I, thank you. And that kind of changed my inner dialogue and made me have a different outlook on what's possible. And I think that's what, that's what my Sam, my character Sam deals with in this movie. And I think a lot of people, especially a lot of gay men that might be around my age are going to see this and really identify with it. And what's great is that even if you're not a gay man, there's still plenty in the movie that you're going to relate with. There, there, there's so many things and you can, you, you know, there's so many, that, that's why this movie's for everyone. There's so many things in it that people are going to relate with. I personally can't wait for it. I loved Christmas house one and two. You had me cracking up, but also like, it's, I feel like this, we're going to get to see a different side of you. Like not as, like, I felt like in Christmas House 1 and 2, you were very, like, comedic. And I feel like we'll get to see, like, the drama side of you a little bit more here. Oh, Maybe well, I'm no, this is 10 times funnier than Christmas House. Oh, it is? It's a broad, 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 broad comedy. But there is a ton of heart in it. So you'll see me do a lot more wacky stuff in this than in Christmas House. But... There are also scenes that dig deeper than we dug in Christmas House. So you'll see the funny, but you'll also see the heart. Well, I mean, I it's, wait broad. To see it's like I do two Pratt falls. Like I just fall out of frame. Like it's it's broad. I, I think they someone at the network said this is like the second broadest movie they've done. Well, my time is up, but I cannot wait for it. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to watch it with friends. I'm really excited and it's been such an honor to talk to you thank you so very much you're an honor now i'm gonna get you an earwig for christmas so when you're sleeping christmas eve just remember if you feel something tickle your ear that's my gift for you